Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my January reading wrap up. The first wrap up of 2023. I am so excited for a whole new year of wrap ups. If you're new and you've never watched one of my wrap ups before, basically I'm just going to go through every book that I read over the course of the previous month. I'll give a brief spoiler free synopsis and then tell you my general thoughts and opinions and the star rating that I gave each of these books. January was a very interesting reading month. I read nine books total and I gave three of those books five stars, which I am super, super picky with what books I give five stars. I don't give out a lot of five stars. Sometimes a couple months go by and I haven't had a five star read. So to have three in one month is amazing and not just five star reads, but these are new favorite books of all time. I think one of these books is definitely gonna be a contender for favorite book of the year, which is crazy because in January of 2022, I read my favorite book of 2022. So I guess January is a great time for new favorites, but I say it's interesting because I also read what I think is going to probably be my least favorite book of the year. And I was reading that the same exact time as I was reading the book that I think is gonna be my number one. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna give out all of my opinions yet on that least favorite book, but I'll explain it when we get to it. So without further ado, let's jump into talking about what I read in January. One thing about me is that I am such a seasonal reader if a book takes place around a certain holiday or during a certain time of year, I have to read it around that holiday or around that time of year. Just something in my brain like makes me have to do it. So when the new year came around, I was seeing people post books that take place around New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And I kept hearing this one mentioned and it kind of piqued my interest. So I decided to pick it up. I thought it would be a quick, easy read. So my first read of 2023 was This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. This book is following Minnie and Quinn and Minnie and Quinn were born in the same exact hospital on New Year's Day, literally a minute apart from one another. And fate kind of brings them together about 30 years later and you see that Minnie and Quinn have led very different lives even though they've grown up like 10 minutes away from each other. They're very different people and have done very different things in their 30 years. So a relationship kind of develops between the two of them but you see it kind of ebb and flow. And I ended up giving this book three stars. I feel like at some point that could maybe drop to a two and a half star. I really liked the premise of the book. This reminded me a lot of Una Out of Order because we follow Minnie and Quinn over the course of many of their birthdays, which would be New Year's Days. Just like Una, she has her birthday on New Year's Day, but Minnie and Quinn don't age out of order like Una. They age the normal sequential way. So we're just following them and seeing what their lives have been like through the course of these different new years. This was one where I feel like it would have benefited more from being told in first person. Normally I don't mind third person POV at all, but I just kind of wanted more from the characters and I wanted to be inside their heads a little bit more to know how they were feeling because Quinn especially, his character was really aloof and stoic and I know that's how he was supposed to be written, but I was really dying to know what he was thinking. But I feel like for a romance, this was really well paced. It was really different for a romance because I honestly didn't know if the characters were gonna end up together or not. I feel like it took me a little while to get through, so it wasn't like a page turner that I was like, obsessed with and it's not something that's really gonna stick with me but it was mediocre it was fine then I read I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy this book was so widely talked about last year and I heard so much praise for it but I'm usually not the biggest fan of memoirs especially celebrity memoirs so I didn't have a huge desire to pick this one up I also didn't want to read something that I knew was gonna be really sad and heavy, but I also did want to experience what everyone else had been talking about last year. So I put a hold into my library for the audiobook and it became available at the beginning of January. So I decided to just give it a listen whenever I had some free time and 
If you're going to consume this book at all, I highly recommend the audiobook because it is narrated by Jeanette herself. This book was incredible. I gave it five stars. So many trigger warnings. She covers some really heavy and intense topics. She talks about her time being a child actor and how she got into the business and I found that to be so interesting. But the majority of the book does cover her relationship with her mother, which was an abusive relationship. And I just found it to be so eye-opening and such an important story. And Jeanette just told the story in such a captivating way. Although it was heartbreaking and heavy, I feel like she mixed it in with her deadpan sense of humor. Jeanette was so honest and open and vulnerable in this memoir. It honestly just felt like hearing a friend tell you their life story. And I was so captivated from the start. I thought I would be like the odd one out that wasn't really touched by this and I was kind of like afraid to read it but yeah I thought it was so well done it was so good and I hope Jeanette writes more in the future because she really is an incredible writer then I switched it up and read Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica this is a thriller that's been on my physical TBR for a while now so I decided to give it a try this one is following the disappearance of three different women from the same community and we're following two different timelines. One is in present day where we're seeing the aftermath of these disappearances and then the other timeline is leading up to and during the disappearances of these women. And we're following several different POVs trying to figure out if these disappearances are connected or if they're isolated incidences. I really enjoyed this thriller. I thought it was solid. I gave it four stars. This thriller dumps you into the middle of the action from the start and I was hooked. I loved how it was done because you don't get all this backstory. You are trying to figure out for yourself what's going on and who these people are. And I thought it was so fast paced, so action packed. I was on the edge of my seat. This was such a page turner. I was trying to figure out what was going to happen. I had all these theories and predictions and none of them ended up being right. But this book did something that I don't like when thrillers do and that is that it throws out all these red herrings at you, which I don't mind a red herring. I want to be thrown off, but I just hate when you find out that all these people and things that happened in the story were solely plot devices and they just end up going nowhere and they're only there to serve the purpose of throwing you off. And I hate when the red herring like doesn't tie into the ending of the story and it's just like never mentioned again. You never find out like what happened. It's just like, oh, okay, that was only there to be a red herring. And I didn't predict the ending, so the red herrings worked. They did throw me off, but it's just a pet peeve of mine when everything doesn't come together and like wrap up in a nice little bow at the end. I just wanted a little more closure and I felt like the way it did end was a little bit rushed but overall I thought this was really solid. If you're looking for a thriller that's fast paced that you're not going to guess the ending that has a good plot twist I would pick this one up. Then I read The Deal by L. Kennedy on my Kindle. This is the first book in the off-campus series and these are hockey romances. So I've heard so much about the deal and I really wanted to pick it up in the winter because it's an ice sport and that just kind of gives me winter vibes. So I was expecting to read the first one and like maybe continue with the series if I liked it, but I definitely just wanted to read the deal because it's what I've heard the most buzz about. So basically the deal follows this star hockey player named Garrett and he is in this philosophy class with a girl named Hannah Everyone in this philosophy class fails this exam except for Hannah and Garrett notices that Hannah gets an A and he's like, hey Hannah, will you tutor me for the next exam? I have to get a passing grade in order to be eligible to play in the next hockey game. And Hannah at first refuses, but then they come to this deal that Hannah will tutor Garrett if Garrett will help set her up with this guy she has a crush on on the football team named Justin because he's like, you know, we're both athletes. I have an in with the athletes. I can pretend to be your boyfriend to make him jealous. It's totally going to work. So that's the deal they come to. And of course, through Garrett pretending to be Hannah's boyfriend and Hannah tutoring him, they end up kind of having feelings for one another and it's about their romance. And y'all, I gave this book five stars. <laughs> Was this book perfect? 
definitely not. It was super cringy, especially the dialogue. It's very like dated frat bro dialogue, which I hate. Like, hey bro, hold my brewski while I go hit the can. Like, I, I couldn't stand the dialogue, but I could look past it because of how fun this book was to read. I was literally eating everything else up and Garrett and Hannah's character arcs and their dynamic together is really what did it for me. Honestly, at first I didn't like either Garrett or Hannah. I thought Garrett was just total like epitome of a fuckboy, such a jock and I do not like jocks at all. Hannah, she was kind of like a holier than thou type of character. I thought some of the stuff she said was a little slut shamey so I wasn't feeling her but their dynamic together they really brought out the best in each other hannah literally said to garrett like the stuff that i would say to a jock in real life she really brought him down a peg brought him down to earth made his big head a little bit smaller and then hannah has gone through some trauma in her past that garrett really helped her work through and he was there for her in like the best way imaginable like i could not think up a better book boyfriend if I tried. He is one of my new all-time favorites. And just like their character arc, like like I said at the beginning of the book, I was not a fan of them. And by the end, I loved them so much. I was rooting for them so hard. I feel like this book was just the right amount of like having depth, but being cheesy to where it was entertaining and fun, but also like had some emotional heart to it, if that makes sense. I just loved it so much. I'm hooked on this series now. I'm obsessed with it. I'm now obsessed with hockey romances. I literally want to read all of them and it made me more into like wanting to try out sports romances too. So this one was a big one for me, a new favorite. I'm so happy and pleasantly surprised that I loved it as much as I did. Then I read Loathe to Love You by Allie Hazelwood. This is the bind up of her three Steminus novellas all in one. This just came out a few weeks ago and I'm really glad I waited to read the bind up of the three novellas all together because they are interconnected and all the characters show up in each other's novellas which I had no idea that was the case. So like I said, I'm especially glad I waited to read them all in one go. So the first novella in this book is Under One Roof. It follows Mara and Liam and they end up having to be roommates and live in this one house together. And at first they can't stand each other but it is a romance so of course that changes over the course of the novella. I really enjoyed Under One Roof. It reminded me the most of the love hypothesis out of the three novellas. I feel like Mara really reminded me of Olive and Liam reminded me so much of Adam Carlson. I feel like the tension in this was built up so well despite how short it was. I will say the ending was a little rushed and there was one thing that happened that I wanted more clarity on. But overall, I really enjoyed that one. The second novella was Stuck With You. This one is following Sadie and Eric. They both work in the same building for different companies, but their offices are like in the same building a few floors away from one another. So this one is a then and now timeline. In the present, they are stuck in an elevator together and you see that Sadie absolutely cannot stand Eric. So you're trying to figure out what he possibly did to make her so upset. And then in the past, you see that they went on a date together. So it's like, okay, something happened on their date that made her hate him. And this was my favorite of the novellas. I feel like this one took me the longest to get into and buy into their chemistry, but the payoff was worth it because I ended up really, really enjoying the story. I feel like it's the most different from anything Allie Hazelwood's ever written before. I would love to see her do a full length novel with a then and now timeline because I thought it was done really, really well. And I loved Sadie and Eric as characters and I loved their dynamic together. And then the third novella in this book was Below Zero, this was Hannah's story. She works for NASA and she ends up falling for another guy who works for NASA and she ends up going on this pretty risky project in Norway to kind of simulate what the conditions on Mars would be like. And this one was my least favorite of the three. I just didn't really care for the characters as much and the trope wasn't my favorite, but like I said, overall, I gave this four stars because I like how they all came together 
and I thought it was super cute. And I hear a lot of people criticize Ali Hazelwood for kind of writing the same book over and over, but I feel like these three novellas were all super distinct from one another. The characters and the plot lines all felt very different despite them each being about women in STEM. So I feel like this would be a good one to try if you're wanting to give her romances another chance. Then I jumped right back into the off-campus series. I just couldn't stay away. I couldn't stop thinking about this world and these characters and I wanted to follow another hockey boys romance so the second book in the off-campus series is the mistake this one is following logan and he ends up having a fling with this freshman girl named grace and logan ends up kind of doing something to hurt his relationship with grace so it's mostly about him pining and groveling working his way back into grace's good graces <laughs> And I really liked this one. My only critique with it is that it was cringe and I would have liked to hear more of Grace's backstory, but I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. I didn't like Logan and Grace quite as much as I liked Garrett and Hannah, but I still was obsessed with it and I love the series. Like I cannot wait to read the next book next month. I think I'm most excited for book three, which is the score because it's Dean's story. And I feel like it's going to be perfection based on what we've seen from Dean so far. Okay, guys, the next book I read, I literally finished this last night. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This one is following Sadie and Sam. They meet when they are children in this hospital gaming room and they bond over their love of video games. But they end up having this big falling out and they don't talk for quite a few years. They are from California, but then they end up reconnecting in Massachusetts because they both happen to go to college there. Sam is at Harvard and Sadie is at MIT. And they end up coming together, becoming friends again, and collaborating to work on what ends up becoming one of the most successful video game empires of all time. First and foremost, I have to say, even if you don't like video games, if you know nothing about video games whatsoever, you will still like this book because I don't like video games. I don't know anything about them. I feel like this is more a story exploring these characters and it's a story about relationships, all kind of relationships, platonic relationships, romantic relationships, familial relationships, and literally everything in between. I gave this book five stars. It was perfect in every way to me. I feel like this is definitely going to be a contender for favorite book of the year. I thought this was so incredible. It reminded me of normal people in a way because Sadie and Sam can be very frustrating characters with all kinds of miscommunications and you see them come together and go apart frequently throughout the novel. This book to me kind of felt like if you mixed normal people with the social network. That's like the best way I can describe it. It's definitely different from that. If you think along those lines, that's kind of the vibe of this book. I feel like this book was so beautifully and effortlessly written. It's told in third person, but I feel like we get everyone's perspective the perfect amount. Like there was never a time where I was like, oh, I wanna hear more from Sam or less from Sam or more from Sadie or less from Sadie. It just weaved in and out of all their perspectives the perfect amount of times and these non-linear timelines just came in at the perfect times i feel like we would be told something that happens in the future at the perfect time and then there would be times where we'd get these really cool anecdotes that would be like a backstory that told us the perfect amount of information we needed to know to understand what was going on it was just so perfect to me like it was perfectly paced the characters were incredible, the storyline was intriguing, even though I don't like video games, like I said, I was so interested in them creating this game and so invested in their lives and wanting to know what was going to happen with them. This book did take me a little bit to get into, I feel like by the 20% mark, I was like finally hooked and then by the 30% mark, I remember thinking like, I could close the book now, this book could end now and it would still be five stars to me. Like that's how quickly the pace picked up for me and how quickly I got invested. I will say, I don't think that's the case for everyone though, because people in my book club were saying that it did take them like 50% of the way to get through, but then they were hooked and invested, but they definitely thought it was more of a slow burn than I did. 
but either way just give this book a chance if you're not getting into it at first and you want to pick it up the whole time i was reading this i was picturing it as a movie so vividly and like the kind of movie that would win best picture at the oscars like that's the level of how good i thought this book was this is definitely a contender for favorite of the year and definitely a favorite of all time now i thought this was so incredible it made me feel every emotion it was so so good you gotta read it okay and then the last two books i read in january are the first two books in the dreamland billionaires trilogy the fine print and terms and conditions by lauren asher these books are about these three grandsons who are basically the grandsons of this guy who you could compare to being like Walt Disney. And they run these theme parks that are essentially like Disney World. And I'm going to Disney World this coming week, so I wanted to read these to kind of like hype myself up for my trip. So I'm actually filming a reading vlog, reading this whole trilogy. So I really don't want to give away my thoughts here. I hate to end this wrap up on a cliffhanger, but definitely go watch that reading vlog. I feel like it's going to be an interesting one. I was highly anticipating this trilogy and so far I kind of have an unpopular opinion about it so I'm going to leave it at that. Definitely go watch the vlog when it comes out. It will be out probably next week. Obviously the third book is just now out so I haven't gotten a chance to read that yet. I still have to read that and vlog my thoughts on the third book. That is my plug to subscribe to my channel and go watch that video when it comes out if you want to hear my thoughts on the Dreamland Billionaires trilogy. I'll probably go into a little more detail in my February wrap up as well. So sorry guys to leave you hanging like that, but I don't want to give away too many of my thoughts on the trilogy just yet. All right guys, those were all the books that I read in the month of January. So that's going to conclude this month's reading wrap up. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you so soon in my next video. Bye guys.